You're the work on your love life, sir. Why do I need a girlfriend? You look empty. Why should I get married when every married person I know is miserable? You get married, you have kids, you're miserable, but at least you're married. I may never get married! <gasps> the festival starts tonight with homegrown Greek Aussie flick Alex and Eve. Other films throughout the week include Riverbanks, Lovestruck and The Fairy and the Man. National director Penny Kiprianu says it's the festival's 13th year in Brisbane. For local Greek communities and uh, the wider um, you know, community, we, we sort of value that we value the role of uh, Greek cinema in the same way we would Italian, French, Spanish. Um, so... Uh, we sort of, you know, like to, yeah, kind of promote, you know, the, the, the wide variety of Greek film. Greek Orthodox community of St George organiser Helen Spiro says each year the festival grows in attendance, as does the quality of cinematography. Well, this year is the 22nd National Greek Film Festival in Brisbane's 13th year. And we were approached by the Greek National Network Association to participate by hosting the film festival in Brisbane some 14 years ago and have been going strong ever since then. Ms Spiro says the festival isn't just for the Greek community, but for anyone who appreciates all things Greek. Well, Brisbane has a relatively small Greek community compared to the other major cities. Our population currently sits at around 35,000 in the southeast region. It is therefore even more important that we invest the time and money into maintaining our culture, language and traditions as the years go by. And our youth are finding it more difficult to connect to the Hellenic roots. Dimitri Platsis, treasurer of the Greek Orthodox Youth Association of Brisbane, agrees about the importance of youth participation and keeping the Greek film industry alive. The youth of the future, and without the immersion of the Greek youth within the Greek Film Festival, it is very hard to keep this event um, going over the coming years. Based on last year's festival, I noticed that there are a lot of uh, there was a large proportion of Greek youth at the festival, which is a good sign for future years. Kos Kostrisios, who's involved in tonight's opening entertainment, says it's an opportunity for Brisbane to bring these modern films out of Greece and into Australia. I think it's important in Australia for all of us that live here to be across sort of all the cultures. You know, we're a multicultural country um, in Brisbane, especially, you know, the last sort of 20 years. I think it's good to experience a bit of everything. That's what makes us probably a, a pretty rich culture in, uh, in Australia. He also says youth participation is important. One is that we do have a um, have a, a Greek community here in Brisbane. Some people being first generation and others being second and third generation. So I think it's important, especially for the second and third generation people, to know you know sort of where their parents and grandparents came from, you know, to see that talent that does come out of Greece, and not only for the Greeks in Brisbane, obviously for the wider community. Adriana Majeros, QUT News. The oriental liver fluke worm is a parasite about one centimetre long and kills 26,000 people each year. The parasite comes from eating raw fish and infects the liver. Here, it can live for decades, causing the liver cells to grow excessively, most likely causing cancer. Infecting millions of people across Southeast Asia, the primary regions at risk are Northeast Thailand, Laos and Cambodia. Dr. Michael Smout, researcher at JCU and the Australian Institute of Tropical Health and Medicine, says the parasite has secreted healing powers. For 10 years, we first found out that it, the worm excretes a growth factor in, in your liver. And then we started characterising this growth factor granulin. And uh, our paper shows how it's not only involved in just causing cellular growth, but it also causes wound healing. But... Dr. Smout says it's not only the at-risk countries who could benefit from this potential healing agent. So there's two particular angles that we're taking. One is a potential vaccine for the millions of Thais who are affected and hopefully to be able to save the 26,000 lives that are lost every year from this worm. But then for those of us not infected with the worm, there's potential to use it as a wound healing agent, potentially for di people with diabetic ulcers. Dr. Smout says the aim is to use the worm's power to supercharge the wound healing process, especially people suffering from diabetic ulcers. His research partner, Professor Alex Lucas, also explains the future use for the parasite in developed countries. 
the reason that the worms are so good at manipulating our immune system is so that we don't reject them. The benefit for people, I guess, living in developed countries where we no longer experience these sort of parasites, ear and down inflammation, can actually be harnessed to try and develop an entire new generation of anti-inflammatory drugs. The aim is for the wound healing factor in the liver fluke to be harnessed and made into an ointment applied when wounds need help accelerating the natural healing process. But, Dr Smout says, there are some potential risks involved. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't be easy. This protein is associated with cancer and so there'll be potential problems, problems with that. But we see it as a particular a last point very um, for extreme trauma or ex- these extreme non-healing wounds uh, under strict, strict supervision. But um, that's certainly something we have to get to in the uh, years ahead. Professor Lucas says the final product is still many years away. Well, yeah, like with a lot of these projects, the future really depends on funding. Um, if we could identify funding and a, a pharmaceutical company or biotech company partner who were willing to invest in this and take it through all the necessary preclinical steps and regulatory hurdles and get it into clinical trials, then there may well be a future for this sort of therapy. Adriana Madros, QUT News. Brought to you by the Queensland University of Technology and 4EBFM. Welcome to the One O'Clock News. I'm Jacob Shaw. And I'm Adriana Majoros. The headlines this lunchtime. A new task force to help out Queensland's struggling farmers. Former Prime Minister Julia Gillard helping out the Clinton presidential campaign. And calls for schools to teach breathing techniques to help stem student anxiety.